Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the earnings conference call of Everest Cantor Cylinder Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal and operate by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shimoto from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this earnings call organized to discuss the financial and operating performance of Everest Canto Cylinder Limited for the fourth quarter and financial year ended 31st March 2021. We have with us today Mr. Puneet Kurana, Managing Director, and Mr. Sanjeev Kapoor, Chief Financial Officer of the company. Before we begin, I would like to state that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature. A detailed statement in this regard is available in the Q4 FY21 results presentation that has been sent out earlier. I now request Mr. Puneet Kurana to start the proceedings of this call. Over to you. Hey, thanks, Shiv. Uh, good evening, everybody. I welcome you all at the Everest Kanto Cylinder earnings call to discuss the operating and the financial performance for the quarter and financial year ended 31st March 2021. I would like by talking briefly about the background of our company for the benefit of those who have not followed the company closely in the recent period. I will cover the Q4 and full year financial and operating performance and the key underlining business drivers. EKC has been in the business of manufacturing seamless steel cat cylinders over the last four decades. In this period, we have delivered over 20 million industrial and CNG cylinders, and we are leading manufacturers in India with aggregate capacity of, of over to nine, 9 lakh cylinders annually. For this, about 7 lakh cylinders capacity in India and 2 lakh cylinder capacity in aggregated across our overseas operations in UAE and United States. Our range of products include industrial, CNG, and jumbo cylinders used for high pressure storage of gases that have application in manufacturing, fire suppression systems, medical establishments, aerospace defense, and automobiles. With India expanding focus on large gas fueled economy, EKC is well poised to the benefit. The country targets 50% contribution from natural gas in its primary energy mix by 2030. Driven by economics, environmental and efficiency, led objectives as a result adoption of gas in the Indian economy across various diverse applications in, is visible and will believe to, this trend will continue to take shape in the visible future. This includes rapid expansion in countries' CGD network over the next five years with extensive nationwide coverage that has provided easy access of CNG to a substantial number of vehicle owners in the country linked to this is expansion of vehicle ecosystem that is resulting in leading automobile manufacturers developing more models and producing more volume of CNG vehicles, buses and other uh, fuel on CNG. As availability of CNG scales up across the country with thousands of pumps being set up, we expect secular demand growth in this safe space. At the same time, in our position as a leading manufacturer of high pressure gas cylinders in India, we are proud to remind remained fully committed in India to fight against COVID since April 2020. During this period, we have supplied over 4 lakh medical oxygen cylinders to the central government agencies, defense establishments, several state governments, as well as hospitals and NGOs. Across the country, thus making a positive contribution in securing the health of our people and community in times of crisis. Simultaneously, we have also maintained a considerate view towards the safety of our staff and their families who have supported our initiatives with complete dedication. Currently, our plans, plants have been operating at optimal capacity. To expand output, we have invested in several debottling initiatives to drive manufacturing efficiency at our Tarapur and Kandla SEZ. These investments have yielded strong ROI by allowing exp rapid expansion of output within existing production framework and allowing us to address key pockets of demand. From our perspective, that also creates a bridge that allows us to grow as a business as it takes forward 
our new greenfield expansion announced earlier that will further expand capacity 200 2 lakh cylinders as indicated we propose to use of the available equipment for this project cost will be significantly lower at rupees 45 crores to be financed largely from the internal approval coming to the financial performance during fy21 ekc revenue expanded by 25% to 949 crores which is by far our highest turnover in more than four decades of operation ebitda was higher by 72% to rupees 164 crores profit before tax before exception item and foreign exchange variation was up 362% to rupees 106 crores these are strong growth numbers and we believe that that revenue visibility remains positive in the current year and margins are sustainable based on the demand outlook from the multiple segments also in q4 we recorded the highest ever quarterly turnover in india business as well on consolidated basis gross margins and operating margins have remained strong in the domestic business as we gain scale based on several debottling initiatives i talked about it earlier reported q4 profits on the consolidated basis have been subdued based on some year end provisions and exceptional items in us and uae we have some one time provision during the q4 related to inventory write down contingencies however we we see a visible improvement in the outlook of the business in both these geographies in the current year and forward i look forward to substantial progress in the near term as you know ekc international dubai our wholly owned subsidiary will partner with rev gas in industrial limited to set up a state of the art high pressure vessel manufacturing plant in hungary we will we own 80% of the jv that will address eu or eu market for the industrial cylinders which we estimate at 2 million units annually the project will be supported by cashbacks and tax rebates available from the local government as well as low interest bank loans these in initiatives make the business case even more stronger as we get the opportunity to establish in eu as a home market to close i would like to say that overall while we look forward to leveraging our position to drive profitability growth we also continue to focus on structural organizational improvements to drive the framework from a longer term value creation of, across all various initiatives on that note i come to an end to our opening remarks and would request moderator to open the forum for any operational and strategic led questions that you may have thank you so much thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of venkat modi from ohm 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 portfolio please go ahead hi uh, thank you for the opportunity so could you please share the volume numbers for uh, this year uh, volume sales numbers for this year and last year in standard loan as well as consol volume numbers of of cylinders being sold yeah you can see the data so uh, i think um, uh, we we've sold over uh, 700000 cylinders in this year 7 lakh cylinders and which was last year what was the number uh around 6 6 lakh yes 6 lakh what is the number in consol sir yeah that's the number i'm giving consol numbers only so these are consol numbers or standard yes, yes these are consol numbers okay fine uh, and could you please elaborate on the hungary uh opportunity that you recently ventured so what is the market size there how are the demand supply dynamics and what is uh, what is going to be our overall investment there so so on the investment part you know we are uh, still finalizing everything you know the the 
the value and every, uh, all the all the details are still being get got get getting together uh, as for the value is concerned. But uh, as for the uh, you know the European market has a demand of around two million cylinders, so the demand is there quite huge for uh, you know uh, for cylinders. Okay, and our partner. So I understand our role will be that of manufacturing. So what would be our partner's role there? Are they just financial investors or they would have some sort of role? You know, they, they are in both strategic and financial, you know, they are also in the industrial gas business. So, you know, they obviously become, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, direct consumers of the product. Okay. But apart from that, would they be acting as distributors or? Uh, yeah, kind of, you, can, you could say that, yes. That, that, that could be, because it's a strategic partnership. So, you know, they, definitely that will be one of the, you know, because you will have some commitments of buyback from, you know, they are gas suppliers, right? So, uh, they have filling plants and other things. So, they will definitely be, uh, it will be like a CDV partnership where they buy back whatever uh, capacities we manufactured, some percentage will be bought back by them. All right. And sir, uh, could you please give us a serious break up between industries? I mean, how much is auto, how much are the other industries? You could say it around 60 40. The 60 is auto. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samar Srivastav, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. I Thank try. you for the opportunity. Um, I wanted to understand you know, the issues in the US business because you've been saying for a while that things are looking up but we're not seeing it in the numbers and this quarter had a significant goodwill write-off. So if you could just spend some time explaining what's going on there, why you're still sticking to it, what opportunity you see, and how soon do you really see things improving? Can you be a little specific on that? So, you know, I think, uh, you know, the U.S. business, uh, you know, they always, uh, you know, COVID has been a, a uh, uh, this thing that uh, you know a reason big reason why the business has been affected very badly you know US business has always been predominantly uh, focused on uh, you know defense uh, sector uh, industrial gases you know so that that has been the, the you know see all the orders that the, the company had had been delayed because of this COVID and uh, you know a lot of government projects went on hold but now you know uh, also you know US had a had a change of um, guard of as per the you know uh, the new president so all these things you know uh, had had been an uh, issue that uh, had slowed down the US business but now we see that things are coming back and we are quite optimistic that from the you know it, it should be it should be much better yeah. what, what, what is better in the April May June quarter sorry what things better in the April May June quarter compared to Jan Feb March yes yes it will be better. Could you explain the goodwill write down and uh, is that a one time thing or could we be seeing more goodwill write downs, more inventory write offs, etc. going forward as well? I just want to understand if that's uh, done uh, or Mr. we Shippur, could see I'm more of that. Uh, Kapoor, yeah. Sanjeev. Yeah, there's Sanjeev here. Uh, see, the goodwill write off normally, I mean, uh, as per the accounting standards uh, prevalent in India and US are different. So uh, US has done it now, whereas uh, in, uh, in the past, the, on a console basis, we already affected the goodwill write down in eight mm -hmm. years, it's starting from 2008. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a one time, obviously, uh, it's, it won't be repeated because we have written off the goodwill. Okay, and, and things like the inventory write down, is that done and over or could we yeah, possibly more because of that? Because it was uh, one time, that's what we are saying. Okay. Uh, I had some, you know, with regard to Dubai, while your cylinder volumes were lower, your top line did fine. And I think before the China, I mean, before accounting for the China money, that business made uh, a profit. So I just wanted some sort of outlook for the Dubai business for this year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, COVID has been a big, uh, uh, you know, has affected the international business. So definitely you'll see uh, you know, things uh, a lot different uh, going forward. Okay. Uh, and last question on, on, you know, the dividend payout. Now, the company earned a fair bit this year and we were expecting, uh, or at least I was expecting a slightly higher amount. So I just wanted to understand your thought process 
on the rationale because it's I think we have enough the decision of the board to really mm-hmm. on this, you know, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but as the MD, you may have a comment, right? <laughs> you know, I think, uh, uh, I think we, we, you know, we started to go down this road. I think we'll uh, continue to keep, let, let, we would like to, you know, the board also would like to see a consistent policy. You mm-hmm. know, where the, the company shows uh, that, you know, they're consistently going to be dividend paying out company, not just a, uh, you know, one time uh, thing. So, you know, we would, uh, that's why they will, uh, you know, they would like to have uh, this, this kind of dividend declared at th- this time. And then, you know, consistently be consistent, be consistent about it. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. So thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sachin Kasera from Swan Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir, and congrats for a good set of numbers. I have to speak very uh, one. If you could just uh, quantify, you mentioned regarding certain one-offs in uh, Dubai and USA. So, if you could just quantify them either for the quarter or for the full year, that would be very helpful. One minute, second. I'll just give it to Mr. Sanjeev Kapoor. No, if we talk about the exceptional items, I'm sure uh, there was some impairment in India also. Mm-hmm. So, uh, are you talking specifically about the exceptional items? Yeah, well, sir, because what we are seeing is, for example, when we see the segmental numbers that you reported, it looks like, for example, when we see Dubai, while the turnover has gone up from 29 crores to 34 crores in the December to March quarter, mm-hmm. from 12 crores, the EBIT has become 10. And you know, so so similarly in US, I think, uh, uh, probably I'll have to give a full reconsider because it, this will not be appropriate to you know uh, bring out those numbers because there are a lot many uh, entries which are there. So the point remains that uh, whatever is there, I mean, it's uh, on a, in our uh, note itself we have given the details. No, but sir, those are not adding up. So if you without giving a specific breakup, if you could, so for example, when you see the segmental numbers, you know, it's a little confusing. For, uh, when we I think I can separately uh, share all the numbers with you because here, I mean, it will be taking a long time to, you know, explain uh, how the numbers go. Sure. Because, uh, on consolidation, lot many, you know, uh, gap adjustments are there. So ideally, it will be appropriate if uh, we can, you know. Sure, no issues. Sure. Secondly, uh, in terms of the cash flow from operations, when we see, despite the much higher EBITDA, what you reported on a console basis is uh, 85 crores versus 105 crores last year mainly because of the sharp increase in trade receivables. So if you could just highlight something on that, is it like a one-time phenomena or is it that we have changed the credit terms and, you know, just to increase the sales? No, see, it's like the, our data turnover are quite matching. If you see our turnover, I mean, it has expanded substantially from our last year. So when you compare, obviously, uh, the comparison is, uh, you know, bound to it's uh, quite in line. The data turnover is quite in line, sir. And lastly, this uh, volume that you gave of 7x investor that you said was consolidated. So, could we agree with the breakup between India and Dubai? I think we just would like to, uh, you know, just keep it on the consolidated basis only, the volumes. Sure. sure. Uh, and this 45 crores capex, that is the phase one or phase one will be much lower? This 45 is all three phases put together, the capex that you have mentioned in the presentation. Yeah, yeah all three phases. How much will the phase one cost us, sir? Yeah, 15, 15, 15. Okay. And all three phase cumulatively will be at 2 lakh cylinders, right? Or is yes. it the first phase? Yes, like yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sunil Jain from Nirmal Bang Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for allowing me to ask a question. Uh, so my question relates to uh, more of a other expenses which has increased substantially in this quarter, both year on year. Uh, it is uh, I'm talking about consolidated interest, so it is at around 57 crore old. So any specific reason or any exceptional is there in this particular item? See, one is you have to consider that it's in line with the turnover. So once you add the turnovers, then only there's a little uh, uh, additional amount, which is because of various provisions we have taken. Or, uh, yeah, so, okay. so there are some provisions which have come in. Uh, that is all one time. Yeah, yeah all one time. 
can you quantify that amount quantify i don't have that uh, right across Approx- the approximate approximate figure is given because it is a jump of almost from 37 to 57 so 20 crore it has increased so, uh, uh, turnover is not all is around uh, 10 crore 10 crore yeah. okay fine and sir second thing uh, uh, in india uh, okay, uh, what was the uh, at what plant capacity utilization we are running the in q4 or uh, whatever it is the reason it is around 90% you know uh, yeah and you know what we've done last year we did a lot of uh, efforts on debottling so that has got uh, you know has given us some good results yeah so that was my next question like uh, uh, our new plant will be coming uh, maybe after 2 year or so right so till that uh, time uh, we will be uh, stuck up with uh, lower capacity is there is an opportunity and we are not able to grab that yeah right right so you know th- like again you know this year also we will uh, further continue the debottling uh, you know and may able to uh, you know at least get uh, maybe 15% more uh, through this process okay. yeah you know so we'll continue to you know do what max we can do and uh, you know then uh, you know finally we'll have to wait for the new facility to come so at least 15 20% 15% volume growth uh, can be expected and can happen now from here yeah 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 okay, okay sir fine great thank you very much sir thank i'll you, come sir. back in the queue thank you the next question is from the line of jimesh sangvi from principal india please go ahead uh, sir you said uh, the ex- Existing capacity of uh, new capacity will be added up at uh, 45 crore. Uh, what will be the amount on the in terms of capacity that will come under the first phase out here? It's around two lakh cylinders. So uh, that is first phase itself will be two lakh cylinders, or uh, over the three phases it will be two lakh cylinders. No, see the total capacity is two hundred thousand, right? so you know what uh, uh, yeah so what you could say for you know the investment i think uh, you know investment is staggered so we just you know put it that there will be a 200000 cylinder capacity and uh, you know it's just that we uh, you know we have to set the plant up and you know other things so you know we've just put it in in, in phases so it will it will eventually uh, you know come in uh, in a period of uh, 18 months so so in terms of our ability to sell volumes will we be able to kind of sell some volumes out of that in f24 or it will be only after all the three phases are completed that we'll be able to sell some volumes from this okay after completion only okay after completion all the three phases yeah okay and so secondly uh, with the kind of increase that we have seen in steel prices uh, will we see any kind of a hit in terms of margins going ahead or probably that's largely a pass through yeah it's largely largely a pass through yes we are able to pass it through okay and just one uh, clarification you said other expenditure included 10 crores of one no right yes yeah yeah yes yes okay fine thank you thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Mishra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Cash flow, sir. So, uh, my question is: uh, Can you just mention your uh, current debt and uh, how much you are expecting to release today? Sorry, what? Current debt? Sorry. Your current debt. Current debt? Did you say debt? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, so the uh, total is two uh, hundred crores. on a console basis and the standard india is 114 crore so uh, when we received uh, amount from china so we were supposed to reduce it uh, yeah, so right? we have reduced close to 50 crores uh, of our debt if you compare from the previous so all our long term debt in india has gone mm-hmm. yeah okay so sir uh, what is your uh, growth expectation for f22 I think I'll repeat. Sorry, sir. Can you repeat, sir? Uh, what is your growth expectation in F22? Growth expectation, sir. 
Bien. Yeah. I think 15, 20% we can take. Okay, so 20%. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah. Namaskar, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir. Sir, firstly, I, I'm referring to this news article sometimes uh, at the end of May, wherein uh, it has been mentioned that the Central Medical uh, Services Society Health Ministry has uh, blacklisted the company for two years uh, for cancellation of some uh, 44,000 oxygen cylinders. Uh, could you throw some more light on the same and its impact on uh, on our uh, father uh, uh, being uh, L1 in a government order? So, uh... You know, company has been, you know, uh, during this COVID time, you know, we've been taking a lot of initiatives to meet all uh, orders from all agencies. And, you know, we have been facing a lot of challenges on, uh, uh, you know, oxygen supply and other things. So, you know, there has been, uh, you know, some unavoidable delays in meeting these schedules and commitments. You know, that is the reason why this, uh, this kind of thing has come up. So, sir, what what is the status right now? I mean, are we yeah, then we, we will be blacklisted for for the two years that has been uh, being mentioned. You know, our, our continuous. You know, we are definitely in uh, in in talks with the uh, with 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 all related parties, and you know, who we are taking up this matter to explain our situation mm -hmm. and you know the circumstances that the company has been going through during this period. You know, and uh, you know the, the because this has been a a uh, challenging time for everybody and you know uh, we have been because the company has not been you know receiving uh, liquid oxygen for manufacturing manpower issues covid issues so you know we have been and plus you know pressures from uh, all other government agencies to supply so there has been you know a, a lot of overwhelming uh, pressure on us so definitely we are trying to highlight this point to uh, you know uh, uh, the, uh, the cmss and uh, you know trying to explain to them again and again that you know this has happened and Please understand the circumstances that uh, you know this was around involving around this um, what, situation. One, one very small understanding, sir. What kind of business have we done with this uh, with the government authority, especially this CMS uh, over a period of time, or is it was it uh, for during this second wave period only that uh, no, no, no. we were awarded? We have, we have been supplying to CMS in the past also. You know, we have been supplying. We have supplied around forty thousand cylinder last year also to CMS. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. so that is a, uh, that is around uh, more than 15, 15 percent of our uh, volume, not 10 percent. Sorry, uh, around 12. Yeah, 12 yeah, 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 yes, around yeah, less than 10 percent. But yes, we have supplied that to them last year. So, uh, as of now, we won't be able to participate. Uh, no, until no, and unless are, the no, no, we are in continuous discussion with them uh, on this matter. Right. You know, right. we are in continuous discussion with them on this matter and trying to resolve this issue. Right. And when can we hear more about it, sir? Anything in the annual, uh, any date or anything if you could share? Uh, uh, yeah, these things, you know, these things, you know, these yeah. things, uh, you know uh, we uh, definitely, you know, what we'll do is we, we have your contact details and anything good news on this, we'll definitely, you know, send out a, a mail or something. Yes, yeah, yeah. Sir, on the raw material sourcing front, sir, uh, as in your presentation, the seamless tubes part has been mentioned. So are we sourcing the same uh, domestically? What portion is being sourced domestically, the seamless tube? And so, uh, well, what is domestically, we have recently just, uh, you know, kind of started. We have not really, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's still under a lot of uh, development. It's in, uh, I would say, just in development stage. You could say that. So you, I cannot give you that there is some percentages have been started sourcing. It's just in the development stage at this moment. Uh, yeah, so because so we were, we were, we were reading about this United Cylinders also uh, now coming up with this cylinder and gender saw right, also. Right, 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 right. Right. So, you know, so we are we are definitely you know working closely with uh, uh, we're trying to work with these partners closely to see to see that this development can happen. Uh, acha, sir. And sir, uh, lastly, sir, if you could give me the mix uh, of our customer, I missed it in the earlier commentary. Uh, out of the seven so, lakh uh, of, of this of our customers to whom we are you serving, sixty percent would come from the the CNG and forty percent would have come from industrial. And sir, uh, our, what is our cost of funds, sir? Blended cost of funds, uh, the long term 
uh, as well as the working capital requirement and what is our currently working capital requirement i think our working capital requirement is around 11% last year okay so our uh, working capital is around 125 crores total limit okay sir i was looking at the cost of fund that is 11% yeah yeah Okay, then lastly about your rating, sir, also. Uh, 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 how is our debt rated? Uh, what is the rating we are uh, uh, garnering and when is the rating? Sir, as of today, it's triple B minus. Okay, and when is the ne next review due? The yeah, user, I think the number... The balance sheet, the rating agency would take up our case. Right, sir. I'll come in the queue, sir, for the follow-up, sir, and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sachin Kasira from Swan Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. So, sir, you may please proceed with your question. Yeah. yeah. Sir, this uh, 10 crores one time, that is for the full year or for the quarter that you mentioned? Oh, see, uh, this was a full year. In, in, it's in, appearing in full year balance. Maybe some part has come into console uh, in a quarter. Okay. And you mentioned that you can squeeze out 15-20% more that you are referring on a full year basis because Q1 you did 125 crores and this quarter was like 250. So when you are referring, you are referring on a full year basis and when we say look at the Q4 number, you are at almost full capacity, can we assume or even in Q4 we had some scope to improve? Not prior. It was grow from there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Salot, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, you mentioned that there is a total debt of 200 crores and the China money came exactly on 31st March. Yeah. So, out of that uh, 50 crores, the debt has been reduced as we stand now. So... <laughs> Uh, my answer would be that now the debt is close to 150 crores. Is my understanding right? Uh, sir, uh, in fact, we had uh, settled the uh, debt earlier only. But yes, uh, beyond that, we have uh, on 31st itself, we repaid some amount. Okay. So, yes, no, so the 55, if I'm not wrong, 55 crores came to India. Yeah. yeah. So, can you, give me, can you give us the number? What was the amount paid on 31st? Not in India. We paid in. Uh, uh, we didn't pay in India. India we had paid earlier only. This amount is lying in our bank account. If you see our cash and bank balances, you will find this amount. Okay. So uh, the the debt which you say 200 crores is still now the 200 crores only, right? Is yeah, right. To say that. Yes. And with the debt paid uh, in the last year, uh, the effect would be seen in this year. What would be the interest saving? that would be there. Uh, could you quantify that number or there will be no saving because of the growth that money will be utilized in the growth? No, see, since we are holding some cash in hand, obviously there will be the saving because our uh, limits have been underutilized. Okay. So there will be saving on it. Okay. And, uh, sir, when you say that, you know, 7 lakh is the consolidated capacity of the whole EKC around the globe, right? Sir, this no, was it's cylinder like manufactured. That. This was a cylinder manufactured. Yeah, that was a cylinder manufacturing capacity, right? So capacity is different. This is what they asked us to, uh, the gentleman asked for the volume. So we had given him the vo volume that was manufactured. Okay. So then what is the capacity which you have in India? If you can throw that number, what is your India capacity maximum output can which you can come to? Around, you know, around seven seven lakhs. Seven lakhs from India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we saw that in this quarter there was a lot of uh, uh, money. Uh, money burn issue in US. Is there settled or can we see still something more is to be happened? It is one thing. Sir. Because that has affected the consolidated numbers. Yeah, so I mean, that, that was all one time. 
and uh, quite a few things are not cash burn they are actually provision okay okay and sir last question uh, you mentioned that you know uh, there is a capex of 45 crores and until all the three phases go you will not be able to utilize that capacity so yeah, my recommendation or my suggestion would be that 45 crores is not that big amount and you will you have profitable last year this year also will be have profitable we should try to push it forward and uh, make yeah, it you know, faster because the, the otherwise thing, you know, yeah the thing is not that the funds you know so so i think you know what we were trying to explain that the way the funds will be flowing you know because I, i can only see a building when you're making a building will only take a specific amount of time that will be required to make the building right so you know that when you say phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 it's actually just trying to say the way the money will move in three phases it's not it's not really the the capacity build up but it is the the amount that you know the time that if they we are trying to the money that will be required in three phases that's what we are trying to say correct yeah is that right way yeah so we uh, so that is the you know that is the why we are saying the three phases so just to explain you how the money movement will be but definitely we would like to spend all the money today itself if it's possible to you know uh, get the capacity done oh yeah yeah so money is not a constraint for us you know uh, for the expansion it's our uh, money equipment is not a constraint it's only the you know it's actually to get it done you know to do all the activities uh, you know the time that is be required will be required Oh. and uh, sir some years back uh, it was mentioned in one of the notes that money was lended to hub town builders what's the update on that i think that's closed and please yeah this is all, all all done all done all settled there's nothing outstanding nothing have they returned the money have they have they returned the money or what they have what have they done i think yeah they returned the money right uh, yeah partly returned and partly yeah have. partly the money has been returned and partly we have uh, company has uh, taken away taken some properties okay so company is planning to sell that or utilize that property of course of course of course of course so we are always you know uh, looking at an opportunity where whichever properties which are not of any use to the company we are definitely looking to sell it okay yeah thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of venkat modi from ohm portfolio please go ahead Yeah, thanks for the follow up. Uh, so you said that your console volumes uh, last year was six lakh. Am I correct? Uh, yeah. And your report says you sold six lakh eighty thousand. Sorry, the your annual report says that by twenty annual report says that you last year you sold six lakh eighty thousand cylinders. and second let me recheck the volume uh, yes yes you are correct it is for uh, console yeah you are right you are right yes so what is the console number for this year 780 so 680 goes to 780 correct correct in within hungary and us a top line would go what is the hungary sales and what is the us sales uh, you mean the uh, annual uh, you mean the uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, eighty nine CR. Pardon? Eighty nine crores. So I'm saying, what is the split between US and Hungary? No, no, US. Yeah, Hungary is just a holding company. Oh, okay, so they entirely uh, everything. Is exactly, bad. exactly. Yeah. Okay, and the new uh, additional capacity of two lakh will be available for commercialization for for uh, from when? Uh, like we we already announced the expansion. That is what we are planning to do now in India and Hungary. Right. So when will this two lakh be operational? Uh, that's why. That's my question. Eighteen months. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Mehta, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. My question is around the growth for next three to five years. So you have already given some some guidance of around twenty percent for this fiscal year. So if we see, you know, due to scrappage policy and BS six and CMG adoption, and we are seeing industrial capex as well. So can we see uh, in next three to five years around twenty percent CAGR? 
we didn't follow the growth. No, he's saying what is going to be the consolidated growth you see in the next thing. 20%, can you give 20% guidance on that? Guidance we can't give, but surely we can give for the near future. Yeah, so uh, what is the thing you want to say? Say, yeah. 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 yeah, so we are building up capacity. So obviously, once the capacities are built up, I mean, uh, you are well aware that that is the quantity which probably will add up. Okay, so what can be the drivers? What makes you, you know, to do this capex? What tailwinds or growth expectation? Yeah. If you can throw some light, sir. You know, is I it like CNG to, or industrial? Yeah. So CNG is definitely the driver. Yeah. Yeah, that will continue be uh, continue, you know, to where we will continue to make investments. Okay, sir. And uh, I missed. What will be the capacity for Hungry project? Around 240,000. 240,000. And when it will be, you know, gets in production and commencement of this F3? It's still in the working stages. Uh, I think maybe in the next call, maybe next quarter call, we can be more uh, clear about this. Okay. And in international markets, so my last question, in international market due to, you know, anti-China sentiments, are you seeing any uh, positive, you know, business query or business opportunities? Thank you. I, I think you know things are uh, like they were previously. So there is not much change, uh, you know, as per we are concerned uh, on the India-China relationship as far as business is concerned. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good evening. Uh, this is Prakash here. Congratulations on a fantastic set of numbers. Thank of you, course, thank you, thank some, you. some impairments there, understandable, totally understandable. And uh, I was listening to the various interesting questions that were asked and which you answered to. Uh, just one thing, uh, in one of the questions you said that uh, the steel price increase is, uh, is taken care of and it may not affect substantially the profitability of the business. So, so is that being captured because you are able to get a better realization from the market or is it profit? You see, most of our customers are all, uh, you know, multinational companies and OEMs, you know, so, so there we are able to, you know, have some kind of uh, system of pass-through, mm -hmm. you know. So we may not able to, uh, you know, uh, get a, a larger realization from the market. We, may, we are just getting a, you know, uh, we will not be affected too much on the steel prices. So, you know, we'll be able to keep the margin intact going forward. Mm. Uh, just uh, one more thought, which I have, it's more of a, you know, kind of an outlook question. Yeah. So generally, EKC has not been very successful in managing businesses. In, uh, like, for example, the EKC subsidiary in the U.S. has not been, I mean, uh, traditionally it has not been doing well. So, and, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the management issues, the culture issues or whatever, and, uh, uh, and now you're going into into uh, uh, European market. Do you foresee any kind of uh, management challenges in, in managing uh, you know, like, uh, businesses out of those geographies? Or are you confident of uh, Is it also one of the reasons why you have chosen to have a strategic partner in the European market? Yeah, yeah, yeah you should correct. You know, so that is one of the reasons why we've chosen a strategic partner. And of course, you know, now, uh, you know, uh, with uh, more focus on, you know, we, we have been... Like we are, we are out of China now, you know. So we are trying to, uh, you know, only focus on the on the businesses where we we feel that the uh, you know bandwidth management can control the aspects of the business. So I think definitely going forward, that is being uh, you know on the mind of the management, and we are uh, you know continuously taking care that you know uh, things are uh, you know completely under control uh, as per the you know new expansions or the existing businesses that we so, are doing now. So so one suggestion I have. Maybe you can try to have the same um, experiment run in the U.S. market. Actually, because I think strategically speaking, you should be seeing U.S. as a very significant market uh, for the fact that you are in the in the business of uh, manufacturing, uh, you know, like cylinders, high pressure uh, vessels, and those kind of things. The kind of competency that you have, and with the new administration giving a tremendous amount of focus on rebuilding the U.S. infrastructure, I would suspect that a lot of gas-based transportation. Uh, you know, like things will, uh, you know, there will be a, an increased demand from your product in the U.S. market. Right. I believe traditionally, I believe traditionally you have been working in the U.S. defense services, particularly the ships and the navies and those kind of places. But I expect that you might expect, a, you know, like there should be a 
good demand pull uh, from from this uh, massive uh, budgetary allocations that the US government is wanting to make for rebuilding its infrastructure to 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 the, to the new age infrastructure data. So in that context, why don't you consider identifying or finding a partner in the US who understands that culture much better, or you know, kind of having a management which is more uh, closer to the to that business culture and probably you know, kind of gives a different uh, um, outlook because obviously the market is a big market traditionally as the US is a very important market, and now that market size should expand for you. So you know, do you have any thoughts on those directions? Or? Trying to find out you made a good point, and uh, you know definitely we we are also thinking in the in the, in the similar lines, and uh, you know going forward we are uh, we definitely uh, you know are much more uh, uh, conscious on the on the investments and the and the opportunities there. So definitely yeah yeah these things are all on our mind you know going forward. So so okay so. Very happy to you know kind of uh, enable some of those things because I think that you know like your business should demand a, a, a kind of a more closer look at that market. Yes, yes, you're and, right. And there's a tremendous opportunity there. So, okay, thank you very much and best of luck. I hope you keep shining and keep doing better. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishit Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. And good evening, sir. Sir, I wanted to understand the raw material side. So, are we facing any transportation issue or pricing issue or any availability issue? Mm, no, no, there is no transportation. There is no uh, issue on uh, refinery price is an issue because steel prices have been going up. You know, yes. so definitely the, the steel prices have been going up. Yes, and that we are able to pass it on. Yes, so, our the, gross margins have also increased quarter on quarter. So, going forward, do we uh, feel that we'll be able to maintain our gross margins at current level. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it should be okay. We should be able to. That's great, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anil Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Sir, my question is related to the uh, American uh, subsidiary. The first question. Uh, there is a lot of discussion. Sir, are you expecting this to turn around this year or it will take a uh, longer period? Number one. Number two, are, uh, regarding medical oxygen, we are selling to the CMS only or we are selling to medical oxygen through other agencies also? So, you know, uh, pertaining to US, definitely, you know, we, we are very hopeful that, uh, you know, now that COVID is behind us, hopefully this, uh, you know, things will be much better going forward. Excuse me, last meeting also, sir, you said the same thing, but uh, is it, I know it is not in your hands uh, always, but uh, we are worried about that. Uh, the, it is yeah, yeah, no, 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 I, I, no, no, but we are, we, are, we, are, we are more confident now, you know, things are looking up. Right. And uh, regarding, sir, uh, medical oxygen, we have, uh, due to this ban, we have, uh, we are banned from all the agencies or only through CMSC, all uh, medical cylinders are sold through that agency only, or we are able to sell through other agencies? I think you know we, we made the the point quite clear in the last uh, discussion. You know, so we are not able to right now. We are not able to sell it. So, uh, sir, my last uh, suggestion or question is that when it was uh, that you have uh, it, it, we were uh, banned by, uh, for, uh, for two years, it should be made public after many uh, very long time. We shareholders came to know. It, as a, you are showing a good interest, good governance, as good governance, you should have told it to the press or to the BSC that it, ha it has been done. Okay, some, some persons have got this benefit. So please, uh, as you are, uh, we are hoping that you are doing a very good governance, so please, all these matters should be made public at the earliest. This is my request. Any, any comments on that, sir? Oh, yeah. Thank you. We will keep that in mind for the future. Thank you, yeah. All right, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. It's a very small point on the raw material front, sir. I just missed. Uh, uh, how is the sourcing done currently, sir? Uh, since uh, you are telling that some Indian producers, we have already started initial dialogue and some uh, some testing quantity. So, uh, from whom are we sourcing the same? And what is the, our annual requirement? 
So our annual requirement would be around, uh, the, you know, about 30,000 tons. Okay, sir. Our annual requirement is 30,000 simplest tubes. Yeah. In, I'm, uh, sorry, consolidation will be much more. So, yeah, around, uh, you can say, uh, about 45,000 tons. 45,000 tons. And, and how are, from where are we sourcing it? So mainly we are all sourcing from China. Okay, sir. Now, and with uh, this embargo feeling and all, uh, of, uh, with, with the Chinese trade and all, uh, do you think that uh, going forward uh, with one of uh, one or two of the Indian companies uh, giving the certification and uh, uh, putting the same thing domestically, it will be better for you to source yeah, the we same? Welcome that. See, we welcome that. We welcome that, you know, local uh, companies can supply us the raw material. That will be the best thing that can happen. Yeah. Right. So just a very small, uh, small understanding that 45,000 then is the requirement to generate uh, six lakh, uh, seven lakh uh, no, 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 cylinders. See, yeah, but you know, see, there are a lot of, uh, you know, even cylinders manufactured in the U.S., Dubai, you know, all that. I'm taking all that, so it's it's, uh, it's very difficult to give you a number, but that uh, you know, you can just simply take uh, the number because you know, some you cylinders, said, some cylinders are very large. Like in the U.S., they're making a very large size cylinder. One cylinder maybe around four tons. Hmm. So, you know, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, kind of put in a number saying that, you know, this, these men, this many quantity, this much tonnage. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was just looking at the conversion part only, sir. Yeah, yeah. Just to so understand cylinders, the conversion rate. See, all cylinders have some, a lot of cylinders have different weights and this and that. So, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, simply just uh, give you a number. How the tonnage is, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, how do we drive okay. the tonnage? Very small point again, sir. Just going on the uh, initial pillar, as you told that now sourcing from domestically would be much uh, easier and also uh, uh, economical for you. By when, sir, can uh, can we look forward to close when close the things uh, totally for domestic, if and any? Uh, are we looking in that direction, or uh, still there are things that in so nascent stage that no commitment can uh, uh, can be relied upon, depending upon the. It's a nascent stage only, you could say. Okay, and certification and all still everything is pending. Uh, yeah, yeah, certification, that. yes, yes, that will take some time, but I'll, you know, yeah, yeah. Right, sir. So, as as you are conducting these calls and uh, giving us a brief, uh, a complete understanding of the business way forward, what what other steps, sir, uh, is the management taking into account to build investor confidence and create shareholders uh, value going forward? Because, sir, the uh, as of our, uh, if you look at your shareholding pattern. We find therein uh, the the absence of marquee name, whether it's uh, the FPI domestic, whether it is anchor investor. So uh, I think a lot of work and a lot of consistent numbers uh, has to flow down uh, over a period of time. Tabhi sir, wo confidence building uh, exercise complete hoga. That is what my understanding is. So. Yes, yes, of course. So that is why, you know, if you see consistently over the last four years, uh, sorry, five years, you know, company has been consistently being profitable. You hmm. know, so I think we have now, you know, and, um, and uh, you know, we have been consistently giving numbers and uh, being as transparent as possible, you know, to the investors and, uh, you know, uh, to our shareholders. So I think, you know, that you will find that this will continue as a practice in the company. And, you know, now that the company is also going down the dividend road. So I think there is a complete, uh, you know, I think uh, we are in line with the, the investor requirement. I think we are in very much in line with. Uh, you know what the investors uh, we are continuously talking to investors we are in communication with them understanding what what they are you know what are the needs that uh, you know they they need for us to uh, you know uh, as a business to uh, you know disclose and what what are they looking for continuous communication so we are continuously doing that right and two very small points the first point is uh, out of the total employee cost annually how much is being paid to the promoter directors sir? out of 89 crore i think so that is the annual figure but what, maybe about 1.2 crores. That is the total amount that has been paid. Yes. yes. You think okay, it's less? Uh, I didn't get come again, sir. I said, do you think it's less? <laughs> uh, uh, sir, actually, sir, it is a good uh, uh, understanding that, uh, sir, in many cases we have uh, seen in the companies, uh, small companies, that they keep up uh, percentage depending upon the profitability and then give a cap of say 10 or 15 crore. So yeah. easily sir, this time profit is better, so 10-15 crore is easy to get out of the company. Yeah, we have kept everything 
for our shareholders ha yeah, right sir and sir, if we take the uh, the capacity if petronet lng se jis prakar se expansion kar raha hai usse koi link uh, अपने सिलेंडर्स की रिक्वायरमेंट में पे बनता है सी ऑब्वियसली यू नो दीज आर ऑल इनिशिएटिव्स ऑन गैस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेफिनेटली एनी एक्सपेंशन ऑन गैस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर विल डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली हेल्प अस राइट सर दिस क्रॉस कंट्री पाइपलाइंस एंड ऑल एवरीथिंग विल ऐड टू आवर यस एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली मोर मोर एंड मोर स्टेशंस मोर एंड मोर गैस अवेलेबिलिटी टू स्मॉलेस्ट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री टू रूरल अर्बन एरियाज मोर एंड मोर यू नो पाइपलाइंस दैट विल जस्ट हेल्प पुट मोर सीएनजी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इजी रीच ऑफ Uh, you know gas everywhere will definitely boost our business this is why we are you know we are we are we are continuously you see in the last 3 4 years the company has been growing only because the cng business has been growing so rapidly right right and you told that in the present is 50% is the market share who are the other uh, uh, players in, in in the listed space do we have or uh, in the unlisted they are all unlisted they are all unlisted space unlisted and you are doing the majority share 50% is yes. the highest i think sir right 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 correct sir so we hope for better better times and sir any impact of uh, this covid second wave for, on, on our uh, operational numbers for the current uh, running period sir or are we yeah, running uh, inflation much, level? You know, I, i think the second wave we were more prepared you know so the the manufacturing activities i think you know obviously there were definitely lot more uh, the uh, precautions that we had to take during the second wave but we are much better prepared you know after the first wave i think we learned a lot that you know how we have to continue to run the operations in a smooth manner so i think we we were able to manage the second wave much better uh, you know uh, you know much better than the first wave and there was no real lockdown at the manufacturing you know like in the first wave there was a lockdown right sir you know in the second wave there was no lockdown as for manufacturing activities are concerned so i think it was uh, it was better managed than the first one right. and you know people also now are kind of aware uh you know and vaccine was you know we have definitely taken the initiative to give vaccines to all our employees so you know we we did all the initiatives of uh, uh you know that we could do and we we, we you know uh, that had been learned from the first wave you know so i think uh, you know much much better right sir so you gave the mix 60% cng so out of this 40% how much goes to the industrial uh, gases and cylinder and, and uh, do we uh, do we count linde india also as a uh, our customer yes yes as industrial yes yes we are catering to linde india sir there the requirement i think so are of very larger uh, size uh, cylinders these are not uh, since i think so those those will be catering to the steel plants and not no no see they, they, uh, linde is in the business is a different business but we, uh, linde is, uh, ma- you know they are manufacturing gas so we are supplying cylinders to them cylinders yes sir that is what i am asking but their the requirement and the size will be very different than what uh, no 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 they are no. they are usually yeah, they have some higher pressure requirement sometimes okay yeah it is not about the size sir no it's not about the size yes they use standard they only the pressure okay only the higher pressure different material kind of uh, products they require right right thank thank you sir thank you for thank you. answering sir and if anything we have we will approach tdr for, oh, for sure, sure 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 thank you thank you we take the next question from the line of vishal asalekar from apex please go ahead hello sir yes yes hello uh, so how do you see growth in uh, this uh, quarter uh, second quarter and third quarter i think it's it's quite consistent you know we are uh, you know the growth is there okay. uh, but uh, the number wise see actually uh, your consistency is uh, consistent improving but the thing is uh, industry wise now this covid covid will go down simultaneously okay yes. so your benefit from this oxygen cylinder for this medical industry and everything will thus will come down right 2% okay Correct. so yes. are you planning to divert this things from uh, how you are uh, planning to you know uh, reduce this gap so you know we will definitely uh, you know move more capacity towards cng you know if the industrial but you know you have to keep in mind that you know we are catering to a wide range of industries it's not only medical oxygen yeah you know, but we, uh, you know, we cater a large so you know this business was see cng is definitely a fast growing business but you know we are always we always had uh, you know a large content of industrial cylinders even before covid times so you know covid uh, was a special time only for medical oxygen cylinders but otherwise also we cater to industrial gas cylinders 
you know, as a regular, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of demand for the industrial cylinders anyway on a regular basis. So I think, you know, that, that, that could come back because, you know, that has not happened in the last, uh, you know, six to eight months because of this COVID situation. So industrial cylinders, demand has been quite uh, huge. So I think it would be probably coming back uh, once this COVID situation is over, maybe in, in the next, uh, you know, next six months, you'll see that coming up in a, in a quite, because, you know, India, see, industrial, uh, de uh, industrial demand is completely, uh, you know, with, with the economy. If the economy is doing well, the industrial demand will continue to do well. So we feel that industrial demand will definitely be there. You know, it is, uh, it is going to be there. And, you know, as the economy grows, it will, you will see that number also. So I don't think that, uh, you know, this should go away anywhere. It's always been there. You know, it has always been there with the company. It will continue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. We take the last question from the line of Prakash, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, sorry, I intended to ask this question in the first floor, but it, I missed it. Uh, just, sure. you know, like an apology if I, if I have not read the annual report in as much depth as I would. I was actually suffering from COVID. So I could not really, you know, kind of make a sort of reading everything. One thing on capital, uh, you know, like uh, cost of capital uh, rationalization. I, mean, I heard in the call you saying that you have a lot of cash in hand, and uh, which is, you know, kind of keeping the you know, working capital limit and all free. And I understand that the cost of uh, money for, for businesses has come down substantially on uh, the, because, you know, obviously the banks are flush with funds and the very you know, few uh, borrowers, good borrowers. And obviously, like, EKC is one of the best borrowers in the market today for you having returned the money of uh, Yes Bank. <laughs> you know, like, uh, there are jokes about uh, people who take money from Yes Bank. So, so with that in mind, you know, like, uh, I just wanted to know how much of the uh, foreseeable utilization you see of your cash in terms of, say, you know, funding equity for your, all your growth plans. And if you have some of cash and uh, you have, I reconnect that you have some uh, lending to the to the business from the directors or the, or the promoters, and they'll be probably paying some interest on it also. Uh, so, how much of that uh, differential or interest is there, and do you have any plans of you know kind of rationalizing that to an extent, and you know like uh, uh, bringing it? I mean, so first of all, is the cost of the difference in the case of the cost of borrowing from bank versus what you pay to the directors, and do you have any intent? We already of, rationalized that. See, we already rationalized to the bank rate. So whatever we borrow from the bank rate is the same rate that we give to the promoters. Mm -hmm. So there is no difference in that. And, uh, you know, what's happening is that uh, today the, the, the cash flow is there to sustain, you know, even the growth and, uh, you know, keep enough money in the company. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we have the, the funds, you know, and uh, the business is doing well. So there is, uh, you know, you definitely, yes, you're right. There is a, enough cash flow in the, in the business. Yeah, because your outlook is also very strong, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, we use, we use uh, you know, we'll use all the long-term funds for the long-term uh, issues, like, you know, the promoters. So the money that is coming on a long-term basis, like China and other things, will be used to pay the promoters, uh, you know, which are the, the long-term debts. But otherwise, you know, uh, for the short-term debts, I don't see that being a, a much of a challenge for us. No, no, that's, no, no, not challenge. In fact, I am, I am in fact, saying that... Uh, yeah, and see, no, typically investors don't like cash to be kept idle in business. Right? So <laughs> yeah. Either they should be, you know, like either that should go into investments, uh, uh, equity funding of investment, or it should go into dividends, or it should go into retiring the debts of the company. So, so you know, like the point that I'm saying is that uh, if you have surplus cash on your books or in your bank, why don't you consider and and this is surplus of foreseeable future investments that you intend to make. You should consider, you know, kind of uh, retiring debts, uh, like. Uh, uh, and yeah, yeah, of, uh, yeah, yeah I, that is what that is the plan. That is that is our plan to you know retire all the uh, promoter debt, whatever is available, whatever funds are available. We'll definitely be doing that. How much is the promoter debt in the company right like, now? I think around 50 crores. 50 crores. So, so well, that is that's almost like one one third of your total debt. You know, like I think uh, the bank debt is I think 130 or 140 crores something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. These are those are short term debts. Yeah, because you see. As a, as a as as a as an investor, you see the first thing that comes to your mind, and this is from also because of the legacy issues of the Indian promoters within inverted commas. Typically, you know, I see one would like to believe that the promoter of the business is there to manage the business and not lend to the business. That's not the primary business of the promoter, right? Correct, correct. The primary correct. business of the business. so so you know any debt from the promoter to the business is like a red flag for for a, for a typical you know arms lending. You're right. You're right. You know, so, which, yeah, yeah, correct. You're right. Which kind of which kind of you know like 
if you have to prepare a checklist for your roadmap to, to marquee investors, which one of the, uh, my fellow investors raised in, in the call, that uh, why we don't see some good marquee investors on the list of investors into, into the company, which is doing spectacularly well, is, is in a leadership position, is in one of the core infrastructure sectors, so and so forth. Then I think these are the red flags that you need to address on priority. I mean, you have, as you said, that you started the pathway of dividends, which is a very good thing to do. Similarly, if you address these kinds of things, then I don't see any reason why you will not quickly find marquee investors on your, uh, on your annual report. Right, right, right. No, no, definitely that's a good point. And we'll definitely, uh, you know, take it under consideration and see that we'll, uh, you know, work on this. Because it, it just simply in the mind, it creates inconsistency. Because the promoter is supposed to manage the business, not lend to the business. Especially exactly. if the business is having a lot of cash. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I thank somehow you. wanted to be the last one in the call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you. I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Uh, thank you once again for your interest and support. We continue to stay engaged. Please be in touch uh, with our investor relation team, CDR India, for any further detail and discussion. Uh, thanks again, and looking forward to interacting with you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Everest Canto Cylinder Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.